Does having more inventory mean faster or slower customer lead times? Well, sure. If you are unexpectedly out of stock of finished goods on the shelf, the customer waits longer. But we're talking about work in progress inventory, WIP, and items that are being made to order. Like that new car with your own custom paint colour, style of leather seats and the optional extra deep bass stereo. Or when you're eating out and you order a thin base pepperoni pizza with extra jalapenos. Hi there, I'm Lawrence Gartside. I'm a management trainer and consultant in business operations, helping you and your team to level up your business operations fundamentals. Clearly, the custom car cannot be made to stock and waiting in the dealer forecourt, as there would be millions of such combinations of paint, leather and extras. And I doubt you want to go to a pizza restaurant where they cooked a mega batch of pepperoni pizzas at the start of the day, hoping they could sell them later. No. As a customer, you want that made to order. But... I don't want to wait months and months to get my new car, and I don't want to wait hours for my pizza. In fact, as a customer, getting it faster is valuable. The lead time is super important, and I, as a customer, will choose my supplier and pay more for faster lead times. As the operations manager of the car plant or pizza restaurant, how much work in progress we have moving through our system is a key determinant of our system's lead time. Consider a private toll road where the owner charges for cars to use it. The cars driving down this toll road are the work in progress of the system and each car or customer order wants to get through the system as fast as possible until it's finished and delivered by getting to the end of the road. However, the road owner or operations manager also needs to think about the throughput rate of his system, be that a toll road, a factory, restaurant or hospital. In fact, since the toll road owner gets paid per car, his focus might be on maximising throughput and he'll be encouraged to let as many new cars as possible onto his toll road. Let's look at two particular scenarios with a one-way, single-lane, 10-kilometre toll road. On one day, the toll road is super busy with very slow-moving cars. And on another day, it's very quiet with cars whizzing along at top speed. But in both of these examples, the throughput rate, how many cars per hour get through our system, is the same. On the first day, on the left, The toll road has got really busy and full of cars moving very slowly, all at just 20 kilometres per hour. So an individual car takes 30 minutes to drive the 10 kilometres. If you were to stand at the end of the toll road with your stopwatch and counter, you see that something like 22 cars per minute get through the toll road. That partly depends on exactly how close the cars are to each other, but anyway. On another day, we get our right-hand side example. The same road seems a lot quieter. There are lots fewer cars on the road, and with the extra space, they zoom along at 120 kilometres an hour, whizzing along the 10-kilometre toll road in just five minutes. That's six times faster driving speed, and so six times less time spent driving down the road. Our counterman the observer standing at the end of the road again does some counting and timing and counts again the same rate of 22 cars per minute throughput. The fact the throughput of these two roads examples is exactly the same is a forced coincidence by me because of the distances between the cars which I have chosen, but they are also quite realistic. I'm not saying throughput is mathematically independent of speed, but Clearly, in traffic, and in any number of examples of a system of processes in business operations, work moving at a faster speed certainly does not guarantee you any improvement in throughput. The work speed does not determine the throughput. Besides, as the operations manager or the toll road owner, 
The speed is not a choice they have, but rather a result of their decision of how much inventory they choose, or negligently allow, to enter their system. It's the inventory level that has the defining impact on the customer lead time. On our toll road, we can work it out using a wonderful equation called Little's Law, which I explain more fully in another video. Little's Law says that L, the level or quantity of work in progress, is equal to the throughput rate, lambda, that upside down Y Greek letter, lambda times by the throughput time, W. If we keep the throughput rate the same, as was the case in our two toll road scenarios, we can see a direct relationship between the quantity of work in progress, the WIP, and the throughput time, or the lead time. On our toll road, when they were going slow, there were six times more cars on the toll road, WIP, six times more WIP, and the throughput time was six times longer. Now imagine the output of the toll road system was in fact controlled by a payment collecting gate at the end of the road that collects payment at the maximum capacity rate of 22 cars a minute. So I've forced the maximum capacity of our system by having some machine that can only do that rate. Both of these example road situations would feed it perfectly. And if the owner, in both situations, continued to allow cars onto the start of his toll road at the same rate of 22 cars a minute, then this steady state situation on both roads will remain the same forever. The slow, traffic crammed road continuing to crawl at 20 miles per hour forever, never improving, and, and also the quiet, fast road, the one with low work in progress, will still also be throughputting the same 22 cars per minute, but whizzing along at much higher speed. The toll road owner might not care too much which situation he gets. Besides, in both situations their throughput rate, and so their income rate, is the same regardless. But the customers of each road, the drivers, they care a lot. Taking 30 minutes or 5 minutes to drive down the road is a big deal. Just as waiting 6 times longer to receive your pizza in the restaurant or to get treated in hospital would also be a big deal. But also, in most business settings the inventory is owned by the business. So now the inventory manager does care. On the toll road, the customers owned their cars. In the factory, the business owns the inventory and has to order, hold, manage, finance and store it until it is finished and can be delivered and sold. So even if throughput was totally unaffected by the level of work in progress, and once things get too crazy and disorganised it probably is affected a lot, even if throughput was unaffected, how much work in progress we have in our system is a big, big topic, which you probably knew and is why you're here watching me talk about hypothetical traffic. So, what could our toll road owner do to get from having a road permanently full of traffic and angry customers with huge lead times to having the fast road scenario both with the same throughput rate of 22 cars a minute. Well, there are lots of nuances to the topic, but the solution is incredibly simple, but extremely unintuitive. And that's why, without a really good understanding of how the factors interplay, you can get overwhelmed in bureaucracy and emotions. To change our system from our slow, full of work in progress road to the fast road, the most important thing our toll road operations manager could do would be to restrict or even stop allowing more cars onto the road for a fixed period of time, as a one-time change to get to a new steady state situation, and after that continue to let 22 cars a minute onto the road as normal. 
in this transition period, the throughput will remain the same as the backlog of cars leaves the system, and then you could slowly start to allow new work into the system only at the rate it can be processed through the system, 22 cars a minute. System Work in Progress Inventory Control is a specialist area of operations management, and systems design with the designers often using computer simulations to model, investigate and demonstrate new methods of inventory management. Lots of this work has boiled down into very accessible methods such as drum buffer rope, Kanban or Conwhip. If you've liked this video so far and you'd like me to make more, perhaps on some of the topics I just mentioned, please do give the video a like, comment, bell, share, poke, tickle, slap. The algorithm loves it and it's a big encouragement to me to keep it going. Without a robust understanding of how these systems work, how throughput rate, throughput time and the quantity of inventory all interact, but also which levers you can pull and what effects you can expect. You and many entire companies are often left suffering, unable to diagnose symptoms from cause or plot a route to improvement. Add in details like choosing transfer batch sizes, setups and changeovers, cycle, process, throughput and lead times, and it's easy to quickly get overwhelmed and feel helpless probably just reporting to the CEO that you need to build a bigger road and invest in the newest fancy robot or hire more warehouse space. So often, the biggest changes require a lot less money but a lot more education and direction. Unfortunately, I don't sell fancy robots, but I do have a great library of online training courses on my site, rotenstraining.com. I cover a whole range of topics around business operations management, from lean manufacturing, process improvement, performance management, inventory, supply chain management. See if I can't help you or your team level up your business operations fundamentals. All right then, time to get in the fast lane and get stuff done. Crack on!